fresh. Crash, crash. My battery is fried. Make yourself useful, big brother, and bring an extra battery for me. Crash Bandicoot has been asleep for 20 years, but now he's back on PlayStation in the form of the Insane Trilogy for PS4. But should you play it if you've already played it all before, and what if it's your first time? Here to answer these questions is our reviewer, Louise. Hi, JJ. So let's start with the first question. If we've played this all before, is this worth picking up? Okay, so here's the thing, right? I've played Crash Bandicoot. My first time was in, what, 1996 when it came out. It was my favourite PlayStation 1 game. So I've been really, really excited about this coming out. And yes, it's worth picking up. Even for the fact that it looks like how you remember Crash Bandicoot looked back then. It's mm -hmm. gorgeous. It's so pretty. I cannot say enough how fuzzy Crash Bandicoot is, how lovely the even the Wumpa fruit looked lovely and shiny and edible. Everything just looks pick upable. But what I have to say is it does not feel like the same experience simply because the code for the original games doesn't actually exist. So they've literally had to rebuild these games. So they say it's a remaster. It's kind of not. It's kind of a whole new game that happens to look exactly like the original games. They've had to rebuild it in their engine. They've put it in their engine. So they've had to literally make a new game but retro to fit it to be the old game. And I don't know if you're going to ask any further questions about whether that makes it difficult, but it certainly brings in some challenges. Well, let's segue into the controls. Yes. So they are slightly different than they would be well, if you played it from I mean, the original. We are in the 21st century. We play everything on our analog sticks. Back when Crash Bandicoot came out, we didn't have analog sticks. <laughs> we had directional buttons. So you can play old school, as it suggests, by using the directional buttons. But what you'll find, and what I definitely found, is I have muscle memory for exactly how those levels play out, especially in Crash Bandicoot 1. It's not quite the same now, like you can steer it or I go, oh, that's a bit off or I'll, I spent a lot of time dying. <laughs> You'll see this later. I spent an awful lot of time dying as I got used to the controls being kind of, oh, will I try the analog stick? Oh, no, it's not quite as precise as it should be. Oh, I'll go back to the directional buttons. Oh, God, no, that's not doing what it should. Either I'm dead and hog wild, which I used to be able to do with my eyes closed. It turns out I can't do it with my eyes closed anymore. So... The difficulty level hasn't exactly gone up, it's just the controls are slightly no, different. No, the difficulty level is exactly the same, and actually you'll find that if you haven't played Crash Bandicoot before, the first Crash Bandicoot game, I never thought at the time exactly how hard it was, and that's one, because when you're young you don't really know how hard and easy some things are, mm -hmm. and two, you have a lot more time. You don't have anything else to do, so you just sit and you play that one game that you have, and you play it every night for maybe like four weeks until you get another game. We don't have that anymore. So what you'll find is an exceptional difficulty. It's not even a curve, it's just a straight line. I mean, even from the first level, you are going straight in there and it is relentless. Crash Bandicoot, especially the original, and you get, it, it was kind of used to it by two and three, but especially the first one, everything kills you. Everything does. Yeah. Everything you need to be ultra precise with boxes. Jumping around needs to be exceptionally precise. You don't want to get too much in the hitbox of enemies or they will kill you. And thankfully, they've added in um, DDA, which is difficulty. Dynamic. Dynamic difficulty adjustment, adjustment. That's the one. So if you die lots, they'll give you loads of wumpa fruit or they'll give you an extra Aku Aku okay. head, who is also there and wonderfully animated. And it's sounding like I'm being negative, but I'm not. Crash Bandicoot is still really fun. It's still really bright, but it does have exceptionally high difficulty, which you only realise when you pick up and go, I can't quite remember how to... Oh, no, this isn't how this works. So it's hard. You die a lot. It's pretty, but it's still... I think some. I think there will be a challenge. I think if people go, hey, I'm going to buy this for my kids, I think there will be a distinct, I can't do it, here's the controller, oh, I can't do it either. Mm. Okay, well, let's talk about that. You did say we're in the 21st century now. This is clearly a game or a collection of games from the 90s yep. onwards. Yep. And it's still got those same mechanics, still plays the same way. So if you haven't played Crash Bandicoot before, are they like good games? They the first one, I don't know if everyone will love as a game, and I'm being honest because I do love the first game a lot, but I found it tricky. I died a lot. I got to a point where I had done the same level four times just because the controls weren't as I wanted mm -hmm. them to be. I was dying just before checkpoints. I felt like Superman without his powers, like I was like, I know how to do this. It's just something is slightly amiss. So it's quite a frustrating experience, actually, because the second and third games don't seem to have the same problem as the first. Um, I think that's maybe because you learn to play a game a certain way and then don't play any others. And every sort of shortcut's there too. So there's one <laughs> level in the first Crash Bandicoot where I j it's um, Native Fortress and I just jump behind the gate. So you actually just walk along collecting one fruit behind all the all the threats and that's great. So there's all these, all the little shortcuts are in there. This is clearly so much love for the games. Like it looks incredible. There's these, you know, the great levels where you're riding the tiger in Crash Bandicoot 2 or in Crash Bandicoot 3, you've got the underwater levels and it's mm -hmm. gorgeous. Like everything just 
has been polished to the nth degree. It is the Crash Bandicoot, as you remember, but it's not at the same time. And now with added bonuses like trophies, of course. Yes, lots of trophies. I got a lot of, uh, you get trophies for finding the bonus areas. Actually, it's worth saying that they've made things a little easier in terms of trophies, just because I think there'll be trophies for collecting all of the gems. Mm -hmm. You used to have to get a gem in each level, you used to have to get all the boxes in the level and not die once. Thankfully, they've changed it so you just need to get the boxes because not dying once just doesn't happen. I think you'd want to stab yourself in the eyes if you didn't have to die once. So there, it is slightly easier to get that perfect score, but that's hard enough. Okay, so what are you giving it out of five? Crash Bandicoot Instant Trilogy has 3.5 stars out of five. Thanks, Louise. Let us know what you think about Crash Bandicoot in the comments below. Click the boxes on the left for more content from us. And don't forget to hit the big button in the middle to subscribe for more gaming news, reviews, previews, and features right here on Games Radar Plus.